Well, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. And let's start with our first hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from what is called the Book of Comfort, a book within a book in which Jeremiah sees the joyful return of the sacred Israelites. Mourning turns to joy as they come back to found a new state and live under God's everlasting love, a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations, proclaim Give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come and with consolations I will lead back. I will give them, I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel. Israel, The Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a water garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give them give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's read responsibly Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young by the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. At the beginning of the letter to the Ephesians, the author offers deepest thanks for all that Christ has meant to the church since it was through him that God's purpose from eternity had been realized. That purpose was to make it possible for all people to become God's children in love. A reading from the letter to the Christians in Ephesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children 
through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to, who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born, the King of the Jews? 
for we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When the king Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. He told them, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for you shall come, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me words that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Upon entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, good morning and happy new year, everybody. And also Merry Christmas, still Christmas until Wednesday. Uh, so we, we get to read about the three kings today, even though they don't technically arrive until January 6th, <laughs> kind of bumped up their story so that we could hear it today. Now in this season of the church, a lot of our traditions kind of get jumbled up together. We mix the gospel stories up as well. Today we read from Matthew, and Matthew doesn't have the manger or an angel or shepherds, and Luke that we read on Christmas Day doesn't have the wise men or any sort of story about Joseph, but we still put them all together in the same manger scene, the crush can over here. Also, we don't actually hear in the story that these visitors were kings, it just says that they were wise men from the east. Uh, but over the years, tradition has dictated that they were kings and that there were three of them and they have names, which is not mentioned in the text at all. I'm not telling you this to ruin your Christmas fun or to be a know-it-all or a Grinch or anything. <laughs> Just to illustrate that these small details that we have, you know, elevated over time that we hold on to dearly aren't as important to the overall message of the gospel. And we can still sing We Three Kings, that's fine. The message is what's important. And that is that God has brought good news of great joy to all people, even the ones who had to travel very far. So the Magi or the wise men or the kings were stargazers from the East, adept at astronomy, as well as various other occult arts, such as uh, astrology, interpretation of dreams, fortune telling, and even some magic in there. They saw the star, so they followed it, and then they found Jesus. God appeared to them in a way that they could understand, not in the traditional way that we're used to. God met them where they were, so to speak. We tend to think of God appearing as an angel, right? But all throughout the Bible, God appears in different ways, as a burning bush to Moses. But here, God appears as a star because God knows that this is what these wise men understand. They know their stars. And if they get a sign through stars, they're gonna follow it. They study the skies as their religion. So God uses what they know. God uses their faith to bring them to Jesus. Historically speaking, the Israelites are thought of as the chosen people, the they are blessed in order to be a blessing to the rest of the world. And here God shows us that, but also shows us that the wise men are included in that. The wise men stand in for all the other nations who have come to worship Jesus, including us, because through Jesus, no one is beyond the embrace of God. The presence of these wise men and their quest for God's Messiah 
announces to King Herod and to all of Jerusalem that the world is changing. God is coming and nothing can remain the same in the presence of God's Messiah. And this scares Herod as we see today in the story and all his cronies, right? In the Old Testament, God handpicked divine kings and prophets and leaders for the chosen people. And after King David's line, that stopped. Herod came to power, not through God's divine cho cho choosing, excuse me. Herod came to power through war and because he pleased Rome, not from God. So now he hears about a Messiah, a new king who's gonna take his power because people in power tend to wanna keep it, right? That thing, nothing ever really changes. Herod seeks to keep his power and is going to do anything to keep it. You see, when God placed leaders in the past, their position was to serve the people of the land, not to be served by the people. And this scares Herod because he likes being served. He likes to be the king. So he orders the death of Jesus. The family then flees to Egypt and waits out Herod's death and returns home. And that's a story for another day. Back to the wise men today. In Matthew, they are very important characters and they don't say very much. They don't hang around very long in the story, but they are nevertheless important. Why else would we elevate them to the level of kings and then build much of our Christmas celebration around them? The whole idea of giving gifts at Christmas time comes from them. So make a note that I like gold for next year. Just kidding. <laughs> these three kings, oh, not three, these kings, indeterminate number of kings, are important because their arrival on the scene signals that God's reach, God's reach and God's loving embrace is broadening considerably. There is no longer insider or outsider to God. All people are included in God's plan for salvation. Everyone is welcome, no matter what their traditions or their beliefs. Not everybody accepts the invitation from God, and that's okay too, because the invitation stands and it never expires. God is willing to use the unexpected to draw people in to God's self. God appears to us in many different ways, and it's different for each person that we meet. So how does God call to you in what ways? What does God reveal to you that makes you worship Jesus? These are things to ponder in our lives. We need to look for these signs from God and then follow them. And there we will find Jesus waiting to embrace us, to love us, to help us, to comfort us, all the days of our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in saying the creed, which is on page five of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
For the prayers of the people, I will use form one found on page 383 of your Book of Common Prayer, for which the response is, Lord, have mercy. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, from the, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, for the peaceful transfer of power, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Port Washington, for every city and community, for the small businesses that support them, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it through science and civil discourse, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, particularly those fleeing persecution, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, remembering especially today, Hank, Peter, Bob, Joe, Nina, Shirley, Mark, Ronaldo, Charles, Carolina, Pam, MB, Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Dina, Carol, Judy, Ilsa, Todd, Debbie, Carol, Farrell, Michael and Bernadette G, Ivy, Doug and Natalie, Joan, and the victims of the Nashville bombing for all impacted by coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for the food or shelter insecure, for prisoners, captives, and victims of social injustice, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all of the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our frontline workers, particularly Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Dr. Dan Griffin, Dr. Jeff Karowski, Dr. Rachel Simpson, Karen Liu, Eva Longmire, Brenda Marshall, Susan Dietz Massengill, Kat Bates, and the workers at Longview Medical Research Center, Marina Guerra, the first responders to the Nashville bombing, and those responding to natural disasters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Stephen and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to thee, O oh Lord, our God.
Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. <laughs> peace, everyone. Hello. Peace. I'll wave. Happy New Year again. It's 2021. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Time flies. <laughs> I remember, uh, this is going to be a bad story. In uh, seventh grade, we learned about Hong Kong and how it was going to revert back to China in like 1999. And I thought that was the farthest away time that ever existed. <laughs> so, you know, when you're 12. Anywho. So this week we have be coming back. We have the Wednesday prayer service at noon. The book group is back. Um, Sunday school is back. Our annual meeting is going to be the January 31st. You can read about that here. And so if you need to submit a report, you got to send it into the office as soon as possible, please. Um, on Saturday, this Saturday the 9th at 1, we're going to uh, be taking down all the Christmas decorations. Uh, and if you want a poinsettia, that's when be the time would be to come get it. Uh, if you're not able at that time, contact Gail to figure that out, okay? Um, so with the school, Sunday School is starting to fundraise for phase two of the outdoor nativity set, which is uh, ironically the Kings. So here are the Kings. <laughs> so that next year we can have kings visit the baby Jesus in the, in the crush. So, uh, and I'm very happy to report that nothing has happened to the crush. <laughs> you always take a risk when you put one out, but nothing has happened to it so far. I'm not going to win. And also just a note is that we were, Sue pointed out to us that we didn't have the offering envelopes for 2021. So which Bernadette and I said, that's right, we didn't get the offering envelopes for 2021 yet, when they should have come already. So uh, Bernadette's on the case. She's gonna contact the envelope company and figure out what's going on with that. So in the meantime, if you still use envelopes for your offering, just use a regular envelope and put your name on it and we'll, we'll find you until we can get the uh, official envelopes, wherever they may be. Who knows what happened with that, but we're on the case. Did I forget any announcements uh, or should we do birthdays and anniversaries? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Um, it's gonna be Eleanor's first birthday on January 7th. <gasps> Yay, what, right oh my so gosh. I would, I would go grab her. Let her nap, that's better, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I believe you. I, I, I'm yeah. right there with you. My baby never naps. He hates me. Um, <laughs> he naps fine at daycare, but when he's home, he just doesn't, you know, he's too happy to be around me, I guess. Anyway, uh, so yay, one. I can't believe it. So everybody, let's say our birthday prayer for Eleanor. Anyone else that we can add? Or it's just Eleanor at this time. All right, everybody ready? Just I'll start and then we all just go, okay? Let us pray. Watch over those Watch celebrating over their birthdays as their days, their days increase. increase. Bless and guide Bless them where they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up as they fall. And in their, and in their hearts, hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives in the life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yay. 
And what a year to be born and live through. <laughs> ah, anyway. Okay, so we shall continue on. We're going to do prayer B today. It's a little different than we've been doing. And we'll continue with our offertory anthem. Um, ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your own creation, this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
Let us pray. Jesus, I believe you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and long for you in my soul. As I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you all. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.